welcome back to Cummins Repower Garage. I'm Brittany Barella here again with Steve Sanders. He's over in the Jeep. And today we're gonna to be talking about some troubleshooting that you can do using the Murphy gauge provided in your kit, as well as the quick serve resource that you get for free once you purchase your engine. So to do that, we're gonna send it over to Steve who's in the Jeep and he's gonna talk you through some of how the Murphy gauge actually works. So here we're in our Jeep Wrangler. We've removed the ashtray. We've installed the Murphy gauge just using a standard aftermarket two inch uh, gauge holder uh, in its place. And we've also wired up some indicator lights uh, using the signal wires that we provide in the kit just so we could show you exactly uh, how they work. So first uh, we'll go ahead and key on so you'll see all these lamps light up that shows you they're all hooked up properly, your lamp driver is wired correctly. And our blue light over here is the malfunction indicator lamp. It is not used in this current calibration. So if you have it wired, it will stay on. If the engine is keyed on but not running, once you're running, that will turn off. So no real advantage to having it with this current cal, but it is in the harness. So we wanted to show you what it would do if you did wire it. Here you have the Murphy gauge. You can cycle through different parameters. Uh, we have ours set up to show engine speed, which right now is zero RPM. Coolant temp, 81 degrees F. System voltage, uh, engine hours, uh, load at RPM. So that tells you how much of your torque curve you're actually using at any given pedal position uh, or driving down the road. Um, so now we have a normal condition engine. We have no check engine lamps or no stop engine lamps. Let's show you what it does when we do have that and see if we can figure out what it is. So I'm gonna ask Brittany to go under the hood and unplug one of the critical components that will trigger a check engine light and a stop engine light. So here we have our first warning lamp and you see that it overrode the display that originally had engine RPM and it showed a code. Now the component that she unplugged is a very critical component so you will see a stop engine lamp pop up here too which will throw a separate code. So you can also see our indicator lamp did the same thing as our Murphy gauge. So if you only have visibility of one or the other, they're both going to do the same thing at the same time. So if your Murphy gauge is somewhere else, uh, make sure your indicator lamps are very visible or vice versa. Now you can see the stop engine light came on. So these are both conditions, especially this one, that you would not want to key this engine on until you figured out the root cause. How do we figure out what's wrong with this engine? We take these numbers that it's toggling between the two active fault codes and we go use our quick serve online tool to decode those SPN numbers. So to use quickserve.cummins.com, you're first gonna have to register for your free service and the instructions for doing so are located in your quick start guide that comes in your crate along with your instruction manual. You're then gonna type in the ESN that's found on the data plate on the valve cover and that's gonna give you all the content available for the R2.8. Once you've gone through those steps, you're going to click on the service tab and navigate to the fault code search. Fault code search gives you three options. It's gonna give you engine fault code analyzer, engine fault code search, and SPN FMI to fault code. That third option is what you're gonna to wanna to select in order to convert the SPN and FMI codes that the Murphy gauge reads out and convert those to Cummins fault code so that you can troubleshoot them using QuickServe. All right, Steve, what's that first SPN code? So we'll start with the first one that popped up and that was 000132 for the SPN number and it was 04 for the FMI. And then this third bank of numbers we have here that has 003, that's just how many times that fault has happened. So we've done that three times. All right, so this uh, SPN and FMI combination correlates to fault code 357, which is an amber fault, which we've seen on the Murphy gauge. And that's for the engine intake air, mass flow circuit voltage below normal, normal or shorted to low, which makes sense because I unplugged the mass air flow sensor. Uh, if you wanted to search what your red fault code was, you can just type that number in. And so, Steve, what was that one? So the red number was 003464 FMI 03. All right, so that combination correlates to a couple of different fault codes, uh, one of which is that red uh, fault, and that is 175 for the electronic throttle control actuator driver circuit voltage above normal or shorted to high. So that mass airflow sensor that I unplugged is connected to a circuit of various sensors, one of which is being that electronic throttle. And so now 
uh, since they're all tied together, it's telling you to not operate your engine uh, while that circuit is not operating properly uh, because you're not going to have the proper amount of throttle or air going into the engine or it's not going to how to properly use that uh, in order to operate your engine efficiently. So once you get that fault code, you can actually click on it. It's a hyperlink and that's going to drop down with some more information on that fault code and all the way at the bottom of the page, you can click to view the complete fault code information. It's gonna open up a separate tab with a complete troubleshooting tree of what to do with that fault code. So anytime you get any of these fault codes on your Murphy gauge, um, again, come over to quickserve.cummins.com, uh, type them in, convert them to Cummins fault codes, and you should have a full uh, troubleshooting manual through your computer. So if you figured out the problem using QuickServe and it's something as basic as a sensor being unplugged, maybe Brittany, if you plug that in, we can show them how a lot of these you can fix yourself. The fault, especially the stop engine lamp, will go away once that condition uh, has been fixed. We might have to key on and key back off uh, a couple times. Um, after a few different starts, we'll see this actually goes away as well. So it's not like you have to go call a Cummins distributor or dealer uh, if you fix the fault and it becomes inactive. So I'm going to key the engine off uh, just for a second, let the ECM shut down and reset. We know that Brittany has fixed the problem under the hood uh, and that she plugged back in our MAF sensor. So let's see what happens when we key back on. So all our lights come on and we should expect to probably see an amber light come back on to show, hey, you still have this fault. Um, the engine's not running yet, so it doesn't know that it's been fixed, but it does know that that circuit is complete, and that's why we don't have the stop engine light anymore. So I can go ahead and start it now if we want, and I can show you that it will start. If I wanna go back to my home screen and see the RPM, I can show one up, I can see the engines running. And after I do that a couple more times, that amber light will disappear since that's fixed. If it doesn't and it remains an active fault, you might have a problem with your MAF sensor itself. So that's why for that component in particular, we say don't install it and don't leave it in a dusty area until you're actually ready to use it. Um, but if you do have a problem with it, that will tell you all about it. So once you figure out what fault code you have, QuickServe will tell you exactly what can cause that fault code. So if it is just a sensor being unplugged, uh, it'll trigger you to plug that back in. Once you've remedied the, the problem, then QuickServe will also tell you how many consecutive key cycles are needed to clear that fault and make the amber light go away. A couple different faults that we've seen as typical initial installation and startup is your MAF sensor, MAF airflow sensor not getting connected. Uh, that'll throw a fault code if you don't plug in that harness. Same with your water and fuel sensor on the bottom of your fuel filter. Crankshaft position sensor is another one that's kind of on the periphery of the engine. And if you kind of bump any of these sensors uh, during installation, they might have a tendency to come unplugged or partially unplugged. So just check all those connections if you're getting any of these fault codes. Last fault code that you might see is a low fuel pressure. If you haven't thoroughly primed your system before you go to first start it up, you will see that fault code. That's kind of normal um, until you get full fuel pressure. That'll go away on its own. I think that's it for our episode on troubleshooting on Cummins Repower Garage. Definitely go online to quickserve.cummins.com. Walk through all the steps that we've demonstrated today. 1-800-Cummins is a great resource. You can call them 24-7 if you have any issues. Uh, they'll be able to answer any questions or feed you to the right technical experts uh, to help you with your installation. And then CumminsRepower.com if you have any questions on the R2.8. See you next time.